Why don't we stand and look at Romans 13 and looking at ch chapter 13 and looking at verse number 11. Romans 13 and 11. Paul covers a lot of subjects through all this. I mean, no, just there's two more things in here. And I want to preach a message more than just to us, but others that hear me in other places. And there seems to be so much of preaching today that oftentimes doesn't touch on the lifestyle of living that God wants us to be living. So I want to preach about the night is far spent. But we're going to read from Romans 13 and looking at verse number 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and drunkenness and chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, in, in the in. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And I could even say, read 14 and 1, Him that is weak in the faith receive you, but not the doubtful du disputation. Disputations. Do you dispute? Sometimes people that are weak in flesh, weak in the spirit, that haven't grown into spiritual maturity, they don't see, see things, everything as we see there's more mature adults, but you got to keep praying for them, keep believing in them. you got to believe in them when they don't even believe in themselves because the devil's going to see that they don't believe and continue to grow. He's going to try to discourage them in every way. But all of us have got to realize tonight, tonight is far spent. And I'm going to preach on the far spent night. For the month, would you take us to the Lord in prayer tonight? Amen. You may be seated. So I just want to encourage us that we know the time. Every day that we live is one last day that we will live. And every day that we live, some way, somehow, prophetic utterance that was spoken and that become written in the Word of God, these things are coming to pass and we see more and more fulfillment. I'm not here tonight to try to tell you the pro projected time of the Lord's return again. I just know that before that we see Jesus Christ in the beginning of the seventh trumpet, the Antichrist is in power in the sixth trump. And Paul even spoke the spirit of Antichrist in his day does already work. Is that right? So we see that spirit of Antichrist working. 
and it works on the minds of individuals, but I just tell you, God is the restraining force that holds everything at bay, and everything is on God's time schedule. The devil is not setting the clock. Humanity is not setting the clock on things that are going to fulfill. God's going to see that things are going to happen as he's set time and place for all things to be. And so I'm just telling God's people today, we don't need to worry about so much the time clock of where we are in the time frame of the fulfillment of prophetic utterance and the prophetic writing that encompasses the utterances that have been made. What we need to focus on is who we are and what we are and how we're living, how we are preparing, how we are growing, how we are maturing in God, how we are enduring all things that we face in the realm of the physical, the spiritual, the financial, everything. I tell this church, Satan works in every way against your mind. The biggest battleground we are fighting is not what we're fighting with hand and whatever. We're not fighting with weapons of carnal things, but we are fighting a spiritual battle that we can only win and only become what God wants us to be, remain what he wants us to be, and refrain from becoming what the devil and the world wants to make us. We can only do it through the power of the Lord. We've got to pray. That's why we're here tonight. They used to call church on a Wednesday night, Wednesday night prayer meeting. There's probably a lot more other things other than prayer going on than prayer meeting. We don't call ours a Wednesday night prayer meeting. We call it Wednesday night service. We come to serve the Lord, and we come to be served by the Lord. And we come to tonight and we come every service that we come to be in, in field, to be filled, to be strengthened, to be directed, to be encouraged, to be everything that we want to be and need to be in God. And we've got to be some things that we need to be in God even if our flesh doesn't want to. The flesh is not submissive to our will and to the will of the Lord. You have to bring it. You have to conquer flesh. Flesh has to be brought under subjection, and we have to look at things that this world is getting darker and darker, we see things happening more and more that are fulfilling of the Word of God, and we've got to cast off the darkness that is in us. And sometimes we want to say, well, I don't have any in me. I'm clean in the Holy Ghost. But we oftentimes find that when we are in subjection to the pressures of this world, when we come under subjection or come under influence to things, we may find ourselves in subjection to temptation. We can be tempted to do a lot of things that are contrary to the Word of God. And there's a list that if you named all those things, it would be an incredibly long list. But I'm just saying, knowing the time, that now is the time to awake out of sleep. People are too asleep, not so much physically, but spiritually. 
and they're unaware. They are desensitized. Their spiritual eyes are closed to seeing what's going on in the world, what's going on in ourselves. And we have to take inventory. If we've ever done anything, we ought to take inventory of what's happening in the world and what it's doing. It's getting worse and worse. But God's people have got to get stronger and stronger. And it's, it's a challenge today. It's a challenge today in the workaday world where so much is being levied in the lives of God's people that are employees of employment in this secular world that we live in. And I worked a lot of hours, and I've said this. So when I come to the pulpit, I can tell you what it is to work a lot of hours and be dedicated to God in spite of how tired I might have been. I never stayed home. I can never tell you when the time that I stayed home because I was tired. Unless I was contagiously sick, I went to church even if I felt sick. As long as I didn't, I didn't feel that I was contagious, I went to church as an individual before I ever uh, filled a pulpit to preach, to evangelize, or to pastor. And I'm telling you, it would be a challenge. But you've got to realize if you the number one thing in conquering and living for God is you got to be willing to say no to your flesh. You've got to say yes to God and to His Word. You've got to realize you've got to say no to the world, to the flesh, which is us, and to the devil. So I'm just saying tonight, when we realize the night is far spent and the older you get every day you live is one less day you live. We've got to realize tonight our life is fragile. So easy. So easy to walk out of a church service and I, I, if I, one thing lives in my mind, this is a Wednesday night. It was a Wednesday night that I was in church the night of the automobile accident. Pardon me for mentioning that. But I, my, I lost my wife there. I lost somebody that prayed for me, that interceded for me. And I have to do more praying for myself. I have to realize I can't depend only on other people. I can't be asleep. I've got to be awake. And that's what I'm telling the church tonight. We have got to be awake. We've got to be consciously aware of the environment, of the surroundings that we're living in, things that are going on in our life and in our world that affect our life. And Paul said, none of these things move me. When you begin to look at things that are trying to influence you, you've got to take a stalwart stand. You've got to make up your mind regardless of what goes on. I don't have my wife praying for me. She probably was my greatest advocate of prayer for her husband, prayer for her pastor. I had various roles in her life, she had in my life, and I don't have her, but I want to tell you when everybody else that, that we can depend on, we have got to depend on our relationship with God. We got to wake up, other people may be asleep, we need to pray for a wake up call. We need for the spiritual alarm clock to go off in the mind of people 
and make them aware it's time to wake up. It's high time to wake out of sleep. It's high time to realize that it, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. We got to realize tonight how fragile life is. All of us here tonight are senior citizens. Being a senior citizen, you might get a senior discount at a restaurant. But I want to tell you, when the devil is coming against you and you might be tired, you might be weary, you might not feel like praying, you might not feel like going to church, you may not feel like staying up very long to be concerned about tending to your spiritual well-being. But I'm telling you, when it's high time to arise out of sleep, more than just spiritual sleep, even physical sleep, whatever we've got to do to make ourselves ready for the coming of the Lord, we need to get some things done, something, some things set in place. We've got to be born again. We've got to be of the water and the Spirit. We've got to repent. We've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. We've got to receive the Holy Ghost. And we've got to remain what we are and attain yet more if we are strong enough in the spiritual to overcome the spiritual warfare that we are in. The biggest battleground that we fight is the battleground in our mind. How we think determines who we are. As a man thinketh in his heart, the Bible says so is he. And that's not just speaking of men. That's speaking of mankind. That's speaking of women time as well. And I'm telling God's people, if we've ever woke up and realized where we are, if we ever realize that the night is far spent, we're living at this point to the darkest the world has ever been. There's a world of evil. Now, it might have been bad like this, in Noah's time. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But we're got, we must find grace daily. Anything that we get from God, I want to say something. The Bible says we have not because we must not. If we've ever sought strength in the Lord, if we've ever sought vision in the Lord, if we've ever sought a conscious awareness of what's going on in the world and more than what's going on in the world, what's going on in us. We've got to see. We've got to keep ourselves. There is world deception. There is devil deception. And there's even God deception. There is self deception. But there is God deception. The Bible said because they would not receive. What's it say? Because they had not a love for the truth. And we're living in a world today that doesn't really as a whole, have a love for truth. But because they receive not a love for the truth. That's why we got to love this. We got to want to hear this word. And it, we can't always come and give you as ministers from the pulpit in every facet of the fivefold ministry. Can't give you always something that's going to tickle our ears. Walked out there, and this is not a reason of preaching the message. Walked out there, grabbed the donkey's ear, 
and just scratch a little bit. No, no. You move back there, just follow your finger. People are following the tickling of the ear today. But I'm here today not to tickle ears, but to inspire the minds through the hearing of the Word. But that we must love this truth of God's Word. But because they didn't receive a love for the truth, speaking of what would happen in the end time, God said he would. He didn't say the devil would. He said he would. God said, I will send strong delusion because they receive not a love for the truth. I'm going to send strong delusion and they're going to believe a lie and be damned. I don't want to believe a lie. I don't want to be cursed. I want to be enlightened. I want to be blessed. And so if I receive it, I've got to love the truth, but I've got to preach the truth. And we're not trying to make living for God hard. We're just talking about tonight, today, We've got to look in the day and the hour. There's a rejection of truth. Tell me something easy. People today are looking for churches that are not preaching the fullness of truth. There are people, many people, they're looking for a church that fits their mindset instead of them fitting the mindset of God. So, in knowing that the time, uh, that knowing the time, verse eleven of chapter thirteen of Romans, and know in that knowing, the time that now is the high time. We need to be on high alert. We need to be on red alert, and we need to be covered with red. We need to continuously stay under the red blood of Jesus that is in both through repentance. We firstly receive that blood. We repent of our sins. We're baptized in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. When we're baptized in that name, that name remits him. And you don't have to continuously be re-baptized we have that commandment to be baptized once. Then Peter commanded them, he commanded them that they will repent, be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins. And that's us. That, that was everybody after that time. They had to be baptized in Jesus' name. And received the Holy Ghost. And they all received it. All the evidence of those receiving it. As they did on the day of Pentecost. They received it with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That showed that God took control of the most unruly member of the body. Which was the tongue. It's high time. Today more sin is being committed than you would ever dream of by the tongue. And that's why we've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost that when God takes control over the tongue, which is the most unruly member of the body, then we see that he can take control over every other facet. What gets people in more trouble is the tongue. So I'm just saying today, we've got to stay full of the Spirit of God. Knowing the time and the day, the hour, the night is far spent. So we've got to stay full of the Holy Ghost. It says, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of the light. It's the revelation 
of what the Spirit of God reveals in us that we're able to distinguish between what's right and wrong, what's sin, and what is righteousness in God. If we've ever been aware, in a day of deception, in a day of deceit that we live in, that's why we realize the day is far spent because we see the greatest level at this point of sin. There's more ways that are exposed today of people's ability to commit sin. And we have to be sensitive to the Lord to be able to discern to see these things and to not only see it and discern it, but to say no to the devil, to the world, and to the flesh, and yes to the Lord, and see things is. The Bible says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. we got to love everybody in spite of how sinful they are. we got to love them enough to want to see their soul saved, to pray for them. Hitler was probably one of the worst men people would know of. But would we be willing to reach out to somebody like that? Would we reach them with the truth? Would we tell them what they need? Even if they rejected it, would we still tell them? Would we live the life of righteousness to them? If they persecuted us, if they prosecuted us, if they proceeded on and succeeded in executing us, would we be like Jesus? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Can we do that? What we do? How broad is the Love of God shed abroad in our heart. The love. Not only our soul, but the love of other souls. The Bible tells us this, and this is where it gets real touchy. We all love ourselves. We do. If you don't think so, let somebody start messing with you in a bad way. You love yourself. You'll come to the defense of yourself if you can. But I'm just telling people, we've got to love people today. We've got to love them and desire to see them in the process of being saved as we are. We've got to love people to a point that we will intercede for them and we'll have to look past what they are and see what they need to do. And God has to look past what we are and see that if I can just keep you, and that's another message of preaching about the potter's field where God works on it. God does not spiritually develop you to the fullness of all faith and knowledge of the truth and the living of the truth over in life. You realize you've got to grow in grace, knowledge, wisdom, power, and understanding of God. But one thing about it, and what I'm preaching about, high time to awake. We need to awake to many responsibilities. But one thing is, if we don't take responsibility for our soul, how can we really take care in helping somebody else? So that's why we've got to be what we need to be, and we're not that overnight. How many of you feel like you plateaued in your growth relationship in God? Not a hand in the house. I didn't expect there to be. But keep growing, keep on going. The more you love God, the more you will love other people. 
And until we love other people, we might achieve some things, but the greatest thing is that we love God more than we love ourselves. And that we not only with the Holy Ghost just love people as we love ourselves, but we got to love them like God loves them. I don't care what they look like, what they smell like, what, where they've been, what they're doing, and what they are continuing to do. We got to see them for who they are and love them. And if we've got to put on the whole armor of light, we've got to represent Jesus in his word and in the lifestyle we live. If we are going to be successful in reaching people, they've got to see love. They can't see criticism. They can't see putting down. They can't see, uh, I'm better than you. They can't see anything like that. But we are just throwing this in for free. We have to say it like Paul, believe it like Paul, live it like Paul. I am what I am by the grace of God. You realize we can't make claims to anything that we are in ourselves. If we've had any achievement in progress and process of God working in our life, it's been through the influence of the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. And we're not all there. And we're not all on the same level as one another in all aspects of our life. Where one is strong in one point, somebody else is still trying to get there. Somebody else might have arrived, but it's one thing to arrive, but it's another thing to remain, to stay, to stay the course. A lot of people are waxing and waning. But the night is far spent. If one thing we got to do, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and in envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not prevail. Provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So this is what all of us have got to do. We've got to inventory ourselves. And we've got to see that we're growing. How many of us are really keeping a checklist on our progress? A lot of people keep a diary of what they do in everyday life. I don't. But I'll tell you what, we better keep a diary on, that what time it is and where we are in God and what we're doing in God and for God, for ourselves and for others. That's what we've got to look at. Are we growing in the grace and knowledge of the power of the Lord? Are we growing in faith? Are we growing in all these things? And these things are challenging to us. And we ought to maybe keep a diary of our progress. When you walk out of a church service, when you get up from a prayer meeting, I don't care whether you're standing, whether you're sitting, whether you're kneeling, whether you're laying. It's not the position that the physical body is in in prayer. It's the spiritual condition of the mind. So I'm challenging us today. To cook and keep on, keep on looking out, seeing how we are progressing in ourselves and seeing how the world is digressing. And I want to tell you something. If you see family, friends, neighbors, and whatever level they are, whether they're friends or friends, you still got to love them. If we can't love the worst of sinners, love your neighbor as yourself, is what the Bible says. That's Old Testament. Jesus said a new commandment. He said, you've heard it was said that you love your neighbor as yourself. 
He said a new commandment I'll give you, that you love your neighbor as I have loved you. So there's people that need love, and that's everybody. And we got to love them. we got to care for them. Sometimes we don't care for our own, and that's where we're failing. It'd be a sad thing to stand before the Lord and hear him say, the new commandment I gave you, you you haven't exercised it. You've had some exceptions to your rule, but not my rule. You don't love this person like I love you. And you don't love your neighbor as I have loved you. You don't even love your neighbor as you love yourself. But love your neighbor as yourself for the Old Testament. Love your neighbor as I've loved you in the New Testament, the New Commandment. So if we ever have anything that needs to happen in closing tonight as we stand, We need to love our neighbor as Christ has loved us. But we've got to love self. And if we don't love self, we won't love others. And if we don't realize the time of the day and we think we've got a lot of time, it's high time to wake out of sleep. Brother Michael Wayne in the back, would you take us to the Lord in prayer?